I'd like to call the meeting to order at uh, five o'clock on Thursday, August 20th, uh, Summerlin Elementary School Committee. Um, let's see, I'm gonna apologize. I'm home alone, except for a dog that may not be well behaved. So we'll try to keep that under control. Um, and uh, yeah, may as well start with, uh, let's see. Public comments, the first thing on the agenda, uh, just for everyone who's here, uh, this is just a meeting to get some feedback on some updates on the actual rollout for the uh, um, the start of school plan. Um, let's start with, with public comments if we have any. Asia, go ahead. Hi. I'm Asia Cerrone and I co-chair the CPAC. We wanted to start by thanking the administrators and principals for using the delayed reopening time to follow both the CPAC's recommendations and the guidance put out by DESE on special education. This slower phased reopening process allowed special education students extra time to adjust to the environment before the rest of the students return. We are very thankful for this change. The CPAC values the assurances that the district will be able to quickly remedy the backlog of IEP evaluations and annual meetings from last year, complete all upcoming annual meetings, and any amendment meetings that are requested by parents this fall. We appreciate the special education plans have continued to evolve throughout the school committee meetings, and the CPAC parents are very thankful that we're finally getting some answers. We are hopeful that the information provided at the past five school committee meetings will be compiled into a special education fact sheet and readily available to families as quickly as possible. Because as all CPAC parents know, nothing is guaranteed until we see it in writing. Thank you all for your ongoing collaboration. Thank you, Asia. And any other public comment? All right, uh, in that case, uh, Darius and Ben, do you wanna go ahead and give us the update on the, uh, the new rollout plan? Yes, sir. So um, you are the last of five meetings, so it's kind of the cat's already out of the bag, I think, on the, on the rollout. But I'll give a, if you haven't seen any other meetings, I'll, I'll kind of give an overview of, um, you know, what kind of got me to, um, basically what we're asking is to, Start remotely for the first two weeks and i'll show a calendar in a second um you know basically what happened is you know we we had an administrative meeting first thing monday morning um and just the amount of loose ends that had to be tied up in, in, in a way that i felt that you know where we couldn't just kind of do it correctly um given obviously safety factors um neg negotiating roles and, and conditions with the unions um you know looking at child care um, possibilities for the staff. There's also concerns that came from the local board of health regarding uh, starting the week of coming off of Labor Day weekend. There was an uptick after 4th of July and they were saying, you know, with all the schools coming back in the area, plus Labor Day weekend, gosh, you're, you know, we're, we're going to be opening it like a critical couple of days. And if we could push that off, that would make them feel better. So I heard that as well. Um, I, you know, and I said it's the other meetings, you know, um, we also have some facilities and, and repairs and upgrades that are relying on contractor timelines, which, you know, usually go as planned, but, you know, we have to be prepared if they weren't. Um, and getting some of our, the last of our PPE materials, which I think we're going to get in time now. Information has come in as the week has gone by, but I didn't know on uh, Monday morning. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I kind of was leading, um, you know, I take responsibility for that. It was my, uh, you know, we, we had to make a decision, you know, following the, the state guidelines the first week in August and, you know, thinking I could get it all done in a month. And I say, I, I mean, you know, the administrative staff and the teachers getting it done in a month, um, you know, was ambitious at that point. Um, and it really, um, as you can see, I, I think I have to slow things down in order to get things done correctly. So um, I'm gonna share, my screen. Um, did Kim McCarthy get on? Kim, did you join us? All right, shoot me. All right, so I will um, present my screen and, and go through the general opening. Um, Dar Darius, Kim is here. Oh, she is. 
You guys all know Kim McCarthy. Hi, everyone. How are you? Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi. And you want to take us through this? You've, do, you, you've kind of done it the last four or five nights. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it just uh, it rolls off your tongue a little quicker than mine, I guess. Or Sure, no problem. And of course, always uh, welcome questions and comments. So uh, our summer vacation is quickly ending and that box is shaded gray. Unfortunately, it's not a bright yellow. <laughs> Sad times are coming. No. Um, but our 10 days of professional development start on August 26. And those uh, are shaded in that kind of light salmon-y color to let uh, folks know that these will be professional development days that will occur in um, each school on very specific topics to help us ready for the best education that we can provide in this very unique situation that we have. When you look at the green boxes on September 10th and 11th, those are our first entry into school and those will be remote days so we call them orientations for a specific reason we really want to have the time to go over the health and safety measures that we have with children we want to reorient ourselves to the kids in a social emotional and deep connection way we haven't really seen them in a long time and they've grown so much and changed so much and they have new ideas and interests and old ones that they've developed and maybe some new worries so we just want to make sure we connect with them and those are the days that are around that but that tenth is considered an official school day and those will be um, done remotely then when Darius talked about the slowdown in the schedule, we've added, this is these blue boxes are really where you see that slowdown. Um, we added a week of remote full days of learning to help everyone get in, give us the time. And Darius, I'm, I'm sorry I popped in a little bit late, but I know you talked about all those reasons why we need uh, a little bit of extra time for that. Wednesdays, all the way through this calendar will be that lavender calendar color and that is they will for all children in our schools they will be a remote learning day and in the afternoon we'll have professional development and the professional development is both deep and wide we have a lot to cover um, and we're excited about that professional development plan the next week when you see that kind of orangey color oh i, I should back up i, I i'm sorry but on those remote days, our special needs, yes, thank you, um, high needs students can start in person those days. And those will be determined by team meetings with families and um, a real collaborative approach. There's a lot going into what each school is defining as um, children on special programs is pretty clear, but others with high needs. So it take, takes a good look at that. Now in the salmon color is an opportunity to invite more children in that are considered vulnerable learners. So they have the option to join the, that cohort that came last week. All the other children will be uh, receiving their education remotely. And then we want to give opportunities for possible small group outside social emotional connections and, and get togethers. It's a long time since we've seen our kids and we might be wondering or hear from parents or hear from other teachers or the students themselves that these kind of very structured outdoor short period of time to connect socially emotionally may be a good thing for some of the children. So those will be structured. Again, you see that lavender box, that's not going to change. And then on the 24th and 25th starts our phase one. And we're gonna slow down that phase one a little bit or have the opportunity to slow down that phase one a little bit by inviting half of cohort A in on one day and half of cohort B in on the other, while the others will all be um, receiving their education through remote channels. The, those are considered half days, so the dismissal is at 12. You can see on the 28th and 29th, those are the days you're marked with that other half. Then we move to October 1st, and that's when we go, drop right into the AB, Wednesday uh, remote AB. And it would be a half day if the acclimation needs or a full day if the health metrics decide. So again, the flexibility, the being able to pivot to really supporting all our community members together is what we're looking there. So it's, you know, the 
Calendar date doesn't decide it. So many other things decide that determination of going from half days to full days. And we've talked a lot about that over our meetings in the past. So you can see though that schedule continues with that kind of slate blue. And then really we are hoping as soon as possible to be moving into full days on those A, B cohorts in phase two. And phase three is then we start adding days, right? In-person days for that as the health metrics as so many different factors allow. In the little bottom box that's right off the screen now, if you, you are just kind of the, um, We've defined what some specialized programs are that we have in our elementary schools. And we also took the verbiage right out of the um, guidance for the state to help understand what those vulnerable or special populations could be. And it's a wide definition and lots for us to think about and interpret for our buildings, our children, our families. And then there's the um, phases, just to remind us all now which phase was what, because we've been talking a lot about phases, but phase one is two-day cohorts half days phase two same cohorts but they extend to full days and phase three we start adding more days and more days until we have something that looks like a calendar that we've had in the past so that's just a brief overview of the calendar and I'll kick it back to Darius hey, Ben do you have any uh, anything you want to add as well, I'm going to give you the opportunity. You can say no, but I know you're as you're kind of on the boots in the ground, kind of working with this new schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, just um, the portion of the schedule where it says we'd be bringing back um, half of cohort A and half half of cohort B, that is really going to depend on the grade level, some and, and classroom for that matter. Some classrooms do not have too many hybrid students so it wouldn't necessarily make sense to bring back half of five students so we'd have that entire cohort back in person um that was the only thing that stood out to me during that okay. thanks man outstanding thank you everyone. Can I, can I ask a question on the uh greg can i ask a question on the cohort model by all means uh, how is that going to work what would uh cohort b be doing when cohort a is in the building I'm happy to start, Ben, if you want, or kick it over to you. It, so uh, it's really we're doing a blended model where those children would be getting education through the remote channels. And then when the persons are in, obviously, they're in, in the classrooms. Uh, just to firm up the health and safety, we're trying to keep our cohorts tight and not a lot of mixture. So even though they're in this classroom, classroom K-1, let's say, we might have the art teacher remote in to that classroom, right? So if they're remoting into that classroom for those persons in the building, they can be remote in with the children at home at the same time so everybody receives art together. So that's a quick little, you know, like example of that. And Ben, I'm sure you'll have lots to add. Yeah, absolutely. And the, w the way we've set up our cohorts uh, at Sunderland Elementary School, and I did send a message to families earlier today that a week from tomorrow, so Friday, August 28th, teachers will be reaching out to families via email, letting them know uh, that they are their cl child's classroom teacher and also which cohort they're going to be in. For Sunderland Elementary School, we have one classroom per grade level in cohort A, and then the other classroom in cohort B. So when the teacher with the A students are in the building, the B students are going to be remote with a separate classroom teacher and providing instruction in that manner. Kim did mention that for some of our specials, um, they will be combined with students in the building and then also those remoting into the classroom at home. Um, and we have put together a pretty detailed specialist schedule uh, that we uh, were working on last night. And uh, I met with specialist teachers today. And so then we'll be rolling that out to the rest of the staff very shortly, which will help to allow us to uh, create our academic schedules from there. 
I just wanted to add, and pardon me for this um, uh, mission, I think we're all a little tired, but this is all Sunderland students are all taught by Sunderland staff. We're all a big family and we're all together. The idea of having district, uh, district cohort for remote was breaking all of our hearts and we've got a way to keep all of your children here at this school. I have a question about the remote portion. Um, where will teachers, while they're teaching remotely, be located? Will they have the option to teach from home? So right now that is being negotiated with uh, me and I can talk about it more in, um, we have an executive session on there where I can talk about the updates of our negotiations, but it's being discussed there. Right now I'm asking that all teachers be in the building um, and they've um, brought that to the negotiation table. Why would, why would you want them all in the building? That seems like a public health issue to me. If we're negotiating that, Jessica, so I, I would probably prefer to, well, if you want, I, I think that all people can be in the building, if the students can be in the building, the staff can be in the building, and then there's accountability to those staff members, um, you know, being at work, they have the ability to work with one another. Um, you know, if you have to have a conversation with a colleague, right, if you're doing remotely, you got to find, you got to make sure when they're available, you got to set up a time to talk, you got to pick up the phone, you got to, they got to be available, they can't be teaching classes, where when you're in the building, um, and we believe it's safe enough to have children in the building, um, they can also be in the building and, and checking and doing those kind of things and to be able to do um, remote teaching from their desks in their classrooms where they have their resources, they have the internet and the computers that you know we can provide them, um, that kind of thing. And so that was the, the idea there. It seems to me that every extra person in the building is increasing the risks for everybody. And it seems like a safety issue that if we can arrange for people to teach from home, it can help keep everybody safer. I'm, I'm not really comfortable with that. Outstanding, all right. Any other uh, comments uh, before we uh, uh, go to executive session? I guess I was, Greg, yeah. um, I was just wondering if, uh, Darius, if you have any idea of, I mean, this is already more than we, the school committee is normally involved in, you know, how education is carried on in the building. And at least in my sh relatively short time on the committee, that this is something that has just been, you know, it's the purview of the administration to to, to run the education plan uh, once, you know, we set whatever policies we need to set. Um, I realize these are special times. And so um, I have absolutely no problem coming to as many meetings as you wish. I just also, but I still hope that, um, you know, there, there's a point where you guys are still supposed to be, you know, running this part of the operation. And I don't know, um, I don't want to say, no, you shouldn't be coming to, you know, back to us for, you know, even if it's just affirmation that we're okay with what you're doing, or in some cases we have serious questions. Um, but I just, you know, and, and I also realized that we may, it may serve a communication purpose because uh, we do get members of the community, parents or teachers, you know, looking in and therefore being um, more aware of things that maybe they might not have otherwise. But um, I guess I just want to say that I, you know, I have trust that I think is well deserved in your administration in terms of how they run the education operation here. So that, um, you know, a lot of this, I don't feel, I look at all this layout on the chart and I don't feel qualified to say one way or another, you know, this is, you know, that's not my purview. Um, I still, I understand, you know, when Jessica's concerns about the number of people in the building, and I think that is a legitimate concern. Um, so I guess I don't really have a question for you. I just, you know, it's, it's, I, I see the need for something like this. I just want you to know that um, I, I'll do it as much as you want, but at some point I, it's, it's less necessary. And, and I'll be honest, Peter, I and mean, Greg and I had talked, you know, this meeting, last week's meeting was a, week, a meeting out of sync with the rest of the school committees. And so, you know, Greg and I had talked about having this meeting to get in sync with the rest of the school committees. And I had significant information on Monday, which this new rollout was happening. Um, I kind of felt if we didn't have this meeting this week, 
a, a big change. I think going to a two week remote is a, is a big change. And I, I felt like Sunderland was going to be left out where I was having four other school committee meetings this week. Um, so there's been a lot of meetings and you guys had one last week and I didn't have this significant information at this particular time. So this meeting, I would say in its loan kind of self was a little kind of odd, but the fact that you, you fell out of sync with the other ones, every, all the other meetings this week had the financial report you had last week and also had the, the matrix um, coming that Meg Birch's, you know, gave the presentation on the health matrix and foreclosure and such. So we gave that last week. So this one is a very light meeting overall. And so in normally, and I even had a conversation with Greg, I was like, it's kind of really a light agenda, but it gets you guys all in the same, um, in our unique district where we're four acting as one um, at times, um, it got everybody up to speed. So now when we have our next meeting and I think we're probably about two weeks, um, you'll be in the same kind of information line as everybody else. So I guess it's just catching you up. It's a mini, it's a mini course. Um, yeah. Mini or yeah. mini school committee meeting, at least agenda wise, I think it should be rather short. Right. And I'm actually, I was, when you sent out, I don't know if it was a couple of days ago, something with the, the chart that, that Kim was just going through. Um, I had had a couple of conversations since our meeting last Thursday with people who had mentioned other school districts that were doing a slower build out of the hybrid plan and, you know, suggesting that really sort of struck them as a, as a real good way to do it. And so when I saw the latest chart that you sent out earlier this week with a similar type of slower rollout. Um, I, I was, uh, that struck me as real fine. And I was glad to see that because it just, in terms of the the burden of all the things that need to be done, it seemed to, to be a sensible program. So I just want to thank you for that. We, we just got there in a different way. <laughs> That's, well, you know, we're, we don't do this every year. I don't, my first pandemic. And last. Yeah, yeah, Peter, I, I definitely have the same concern. Like, uh, let's put it this way, uh, because it, it affected the calendar and it, Darius seemed to want a vote on it, which, you know, is, is sort of the purview of the, the committee uh, to vote on calendar stuff. We're just going to go ahead and, and do this. But I, I, your point is well taken that uh, we should keep a sharp eye on what's our stuff and, and what uh, the administration uh, should be doing for, you know, procedures and, and staying out of their uh shoes yeah but I, see i also you know i'm also i'm always conflicted on all this stuff because then i listen yeah. to what i'm gonna blow her pronunciation but aja um from sure. cpac yeah. said you know and those are important comments to hear and and what yep. you know, jessica's concerned and that's important to hear and so you know you can have a meeting say why are we having the meeting but if you come out with a couple of things that are like yeah we're saying you know that's okay um so anyway uh I'm not in the least uh, bit concerned about not having to write minutes for a three and a half hour meeting. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, so you want a motion? Yeah, let's have a motion to enter executive session. Well, I was thinking we want to oh. want to. Can we vote on this plan first, or should we? Then we I'm don't, okay. And we I'm don't okay with that. You, let's do that. You go, ahead, Darius. Well, I was just going to say the other committees didn't vote it. They just, they took the information and didn't object to it, I guess. So, I mean, just in the sense of, we left the vote where the, the calendar of a slow out start was going to be modified with input yeah. from teachers. And I was just reporting that back. So you can vote it, but the other ones didn't. So. I don't know. Have we done, I mean, I remember in past years, we've had a vote on accepting the school calendar at some point uh, back in the spring. It, you know what, and I'll bring that the first week in uh, uh, the, the next meeting, I'll have the full school calendar. It is already, I have it on the website because parents needed to see it. Remember we we voted the start date. I put the holiday, the, uh, holiday breaks in, um, in vacation breaks as they would normally fall. Usually those aren't um, debated much. It really, the biggest debate as you know, is usually the Friday before Labor Day weekend. And um, when do we, what day do we start school? So we've kind of, we've established that the rest of it, um, I posted it because families needed to know, um, but I'll bring it back to get the stamp of approval moving forward. But again, that's one of those things where it's tough not to do in a joint meeting because whoever votes at first, if someone says nay, um, it's one of those difficult. That's why we, that's why I'm bringing this kind of calendar thing to each school committee to have a discussion about um, because of uh, the complexity of, you know, we have a union that a union that runs on that calendar, the work um, the work week, so to speak. So, 
So I certainly don't feel, if someone feels a need to, to move to vote, please do so. Otherwise, sounds like we'll just continue on. Yep. All right, and to that point, uh, we, we want to decide that uh, we're going to uh, end the meeting after executive session and so uh, save people who are uh, online perhaps from, from the uh, returning to adjourn after executive session. So we can, once we move, we have to go through the motion to enter True. executive session and then yep. we will just return in order to, we will just come back to open session in order to adjourn the open session. I think that's how it has to work. Okay, if that's how it has to work, we'll do that. So um, you made, did you make the motion? I hear you read the motion or Let's you should? Yeah, uh, I'll move uh, executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. Um, like to move to go to executive session. I'll second that. All right. Uh, let's see. Peter? Yes. Maisie? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Keith? Yes. Greg? Yes. So it's unanimous.